It's now back to the House of Representatives hands, which is why our next guest is front in front of our cameras. Representative Barry Loudermilk serves on the House Financial Services Committee of Georgia. He is joining us live from Capitol Hill. Uh, Congressman, is the House tinkering with what the Senate just sent back to you, or will you rubber stamp it and send it to the president right now? Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't categorize it either. We're going to strengthen the bill. Uh, there are 29 bipartisan reforms that we have recently passed that, as again, has gotten support of Republicans and Democrats that we're looking to actually add to it. I don't think it's going to hurt its chances uh, back in the Senate. It just further strengthens the, the law to help the small bankers mm -hmm. out there to actually be able to start creating banks again and serving their customers the way that they have always had in the past prior to Dodd-Frank. You're saying strengthen, but I, I would say if it's going to at least release the smaller regional banks from these onerous regulations that would would be a loosening certainly and that's what they have asked for we cover these regional banks at fox business and we right. remember during during the financial crisis hundreds upon hundreds of smaller banks went yes. under because of the sins and the recklessness of the larger money center institutions so this would be much needed help right Absolutely. And, you know, when I when I use strengthening, I'm talking about from the aspect of the smaller banks. We are definitely loosening those regulations. No state lost more banks than Georgia. In fact, today we even have 52 counties that do not have a small uh, community bank. And we have three counties that have no bank branch at all because of the restrictions of the broad brush that was painted by Dodd-Frank. Has, has restricted the creation of new community banks. And all we're going to do is add a few more provisions to this bill. Again, bipartisan provisions that have been supported by Republicans and Democrats mm -hmm. to actually give more, more relief to these small lending institutions. If you change it, though, it now has to go back to the Senate. Are you worried that the Senate won't pass that version? No, that's why it was important that we got bipartisan support on each piece of the legislation. So we're looking at those bills that passed uh, out of the, the Financial Services Committee on a strong bipartisan basis and received strong bipartisan support on the House floor. So if we've got, you know, two thirds of the body voting for it or, you know, uh, 30 or 40 Democrats supporting it in the in the House of Representatives, we're certain that they will get that support out of the Senate. Uh, as a member of the House Financial Services Committee, we'd be remiss if we didn't bring up uh, a story that involves the SEC, which your committee oversees, and it involves this, this Theranos fraud, massive fraud, according to the SEC, where Elizabeth Holmes, the very young so-called dynamic founder, uh, was pulling off quite a fraud, $700 million of investors' money going poof, vaporized. She had promised to revolutionize blood testing. Well, it turns out this was a civil fine of only, I say only 500000 because this was a $700 million fraud, and she promises not to be an officer of a publicly traded company for the next 10 years. You, as a member of this community that oversees the SEC, do you feel that this is a too light, too, too much of a wrist slap? Well, it very well could be, and I'm sure we're going to take a look at this and see, you know, what were extenuating circumstances, what led to this relatively small fine by the SEC, but also, is there criminal fraud involved in this of which the Department of Justice may need to get involved? So, uh, the, as, as this thing is evolving and uh, we're, we're taking a look at it, we'll use our oversight power to really ask some serious questions of the SEC, because Right now, I'm going to assume they know some things that we don't at this point. Well, uh, I, uh, so, so can I just infer from what you just said, you will be taking a closer look at the Theranos situation? I believe we will as a, as a committee. I can't speak for the chairman, but mm -hmm. individually, I think this is something we do need to take a serious look at. Uh, we may need to uh, uh, question the SEC chairman mm -hmm. to get more details about why they thought such a low fine was appropriate with such what appears to be exactly. a, uh, a major fraud. Yeah, uh, and we should disclose, uh, not that it should make any difference, but that uh, the chairman of our parent company, uh, Fox uh, A, which is the ticker symbol, Rupert Murdoch, had lost some money as an investment in this. but. Uh, he was not the only one. There were many, many people. Uh, Congressman, thank you very much. Well, thank you, Liz. I appreciate it. Congressman Barry Loudermilk, Republican of Georgia.